so folks, one of the really fascinating things is that with the indictment of old Donnie finally going down, we're starting to learn things that we never learned before, because a lot of it was shrouded in secrecy, especially from key witnesses like Michael Cohen. A lot of what he was saying, he wasn't allowed to divulge publicly, because he was saying it to the grand jury, and the grand jury deliberations were secret, or he was saying it to brag and his team, and obviously all of that was secret. But Cohen, now that the indictment has gone out, he is able to speak about it, and so are many other people. And what Cohen has just revealed blows the door wide open and destroys yet another one of Donald Trump's few remaining defenses. Remember, we've already discussed how the defense around, oh, trying to protect Melania's honor has been utterly destroyed. But what Michael Cohen and others just released really shows that the man has even less a defense now than he did six, 12 hours ago. I wanna play this for you because it outlines how big of a deal Cohen is, how he's nailed Donald Trump in his latest mafia style threats, and how critically guys, even without Michael Cohen, let's say you wanna play devil's advocate and you don't trust Cohen, it goes beyond him. But what he just did and what he's revealed tonight changes it all. Donald Trump has always relied on more, intelligent, read-in men, powerful men, to fix everything. Mm -hmm. When it was his financial issues, his father would fix it. He would burn money, essentially throw it in the incinerator. The father would give him more. You know, they even, he even got extra money from the father's will because he you know, took it from his siblings. The father's money fixed it. He lost $317 million of his, fa of his inheritance. Went deep in the hole, the courts fixed it. Yeah. He had lawyers, he had Roy Cohn who could step in and fix everything. The courts were always used to fix his problems. He had Michael Cohen, whose job was to fix this. You know, and he had AMI, whose job was to fix this. They agreed, these three entities agreed, don't worry. All of the dirt in your background yeah, will this. fix it. Yeah. So when the doorman comes forward, give him 30 grand, fix it. Mm -hmm. When the first woman, Karen McDougal, comes forward, no problem, we'll fix it. And then the third one comes along, Stormy Daniels, we'll fix it. But then at some point, the criminal justice system stepped in and said, hey, Michael Cohen, what was this loan, this HELOC <laughs> for? Oh, he didn't tell the truth to the bank, felony. Right. Right. And the feds came in and nicked Michael Cohen. And then at the last bit of this filing today in the narrative, they talk about the intimidation campaign to get Cohen to not talk. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. Right. They talk about the fact that Cohen was told, just be smart. Stick with us. We're good. Don't you know, don't waver. You have friends in high places. You have friends in high places. But he ends up going down anyway. AMI, second part of the plan. They admit to the feds, yo, this was about trying to fix the election. Yeah. So two out of the three parties That's right. went south on him. And now here's Donald Trump alone. Hugo Lowell talked about having covered him a long time. This is the first time Donald Trump had no one who could fix it. Mm. If every time someone brings up the Cohen credibility thing, here's my problem with that. Everything Michael Cohen has said has turned out to be accurate. Sure, sure. Michael Cohen pleaded guilty to crimes, all of which, except for one, were related to doing something at the behest of one person, Donald Trump. He's the only person who benefited from it. He's the person that Michael Cohen did it for. And in this indictment, it says they created the shell company to pay the, at, at, his, at his behest. That's Michael Cohen doing that for Donald Trump. Michael Cohen pleaded guilty to it. AMI admitted to the feds that it was a crime, admitted it was for the campaign. If three people commit a crime and two people admit that it's a crime and one goes to prison for it, the third person also committed a crime. I don't see an issue with Michael well, Cohen. I see an issue with Donald Trump. Here he is again talking not just about the scheme, not just directing it and coordinating it, but about how the money should be paid. He suggests cash. I need to open up a company for the transfer of all of that info regarding our friend David, you know, so that I'm going to do that right away. I've actually come up and, I've spoken, to and I've spoken to Alan Weisselberg about how to set the whole thing up uh, with so what are we gonna funding. The, uh, yes. Um, and it's all the yeah, stuff, all the stuff, because, you know, you never know where that company, no, you never you know where he's going to be. Gets it by Correct. So I'm, I'm all over that. And I spoke to Alan about it when it comes time for the financing, which will be what financing? We'll have to pay you. So I'll pay for cash. No, 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 no. Cash. No, 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 no. And then 
I don't think people can get by buses very often. So yeah. Cohen was like, we don't have that much cash. For one thing, this is yeah. not a very cash heavy yeah. institution. <laughs> um, I th think about a couple things that we've seen today, one of which is that image, that split screen image that we just had a second ago, which is sort of just, I can't help but think, Alvin Bragg digging in, Donald Trump sloping off, you know, flying away mm. off to Florida. There's something about that that's a kind of poetry to that. And I know he's going to give a speech tonight down in Florida, but there was something kind of there. This is supposedly his hometown. I keep coming back to that again. again. I yeah. can't get a fair trial in my hometown. I'm a king of this town. I have buildings all over this town. I can never get a fair trial there because people hate me so much, even though they love me in New York. It's like, you know, something about this whole day that's had that flavor. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the other thing that really strikes me at this moment, and I, I, we'll talk about this, I'm sure, for a long time because... We now hear that December is the next uh, hearing in yeah. this case. And man, for people who have been waiting for this moment and can now have this moment here today to now be told that they're not going to have any progress on this case until December of this year. And that a lot of the lawyers that I know, Andrew is among them, a lot of people think that this case will not be heard in court until after the 2024 election, most likely. So everyone should just at least is, as much satisfaction as people who want to see Trump held accountable uh, may feel today. They also got to slow their roll a little bit here because it's not going to happen fast. Uh, the big story to me in all these documents, and I, I'm going to throw this to add to, to, to Andrew, is that we all have been so focused on Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen, Michael Cohen, Michael Cohen. Is he credible? Is he not credible? Michael Cohen, Michael Cohen. And I read these documents and I go, man, this trial is going to be about David Pecker. That David Pecker turns out to be in the middle of this thing as much or more than Michael Cohen and that he's, he's all over. So th th as we've they laid it all out here, and as Bragg laid it out, the AMI and that piece, which of course has been the subject of a lot of discussion, a lot of reporting over going back over years, but the fact that he's given the testimony he's given, he just seems like he's going to be the star witness here. Is that not right? Let, and let me onto his lap. So it's the first time in his life that he's going to be held accountable for his own dirty deeds. Now the case isn't just uh, uh, legal; it has become personal. Uh, last week, uh, I confronted Trump's lawyer on this program about uh, the threats uh, District Attorney Bragg, including uh, the former president's uh, repost of a picture that appears to show threatening Bragg with a bat. The DA's office has reportedly received numerous threats. And Michael, I, I don't want to get personal, but I have to ask you on the air. We've talked about this off the air. You've received a lot of threats, you and your family, the last days since the indictment. Uh, do you feel uncomfortable talking about that? Because uh, it touches me when you were away. I talked to your son, had mm -hmm. prayer with him, had prayer with you before. And you shared with me on the phone the other day that the, the threats had become, had gone off the chain since the indictment. Yeah, well, that's Donald Trump. That's him blowing the dog whistle so to speak. I mean, he, know, he knows exactly what he's doing. When he was holding up that baseball bat to Alvin Bragg, he's sending a mob message. He's not just doing it to show a baseball bat where the baseball bat is a Louisville slugger made in the USA like he's purporting. That's a lie. And so what he's doing is he's trying to invoke fear and intimidation. But at the same time, he's also passing a message to his supporters. Baseball bats. They work, too. Now, is he also trying to imply to whoever may be witnesses at this trial uh, that he's trying to intimidate them? Yeah. So his threats of intimidation are not specifically directed at Alvin Bragg or the prosecutorial team. It's anyone that he deems a threat to him. He wants them to know that he has the power of 28 percent of the Republican Party. He has these MAGAs who like the ones that stormed the Capitol, right? Seditious conspiracy. He has a group of individuals that seek, that he wants to do his dirty work, right? And that's exactly what he's doing. And that could also include the judge and the jury. So you can see there, you can see a few things. One, Cohen's been right every step of the way. Say what you will about the man five, six years ago. The dude's been right. He's been credible. He's been extremely consistent in his story. And when it comes to naming the dirt of old Donnie, the man is one of the most credible people on this planet. More than that, it's not just about him. As noted there, there's other, there's David Pecker, but there's also reams of documents and letters and, and emails and audio and other witnesses. And then how all of these things ca can, can be mashed together to either create new strands of evidence or if Cohen was lying or misremembered or was mistaken, 
it would be exposed through the contradictions of the other evidence, and at least thus far, it hasn't happened yet. But one thing is also really important, is that it really shows, guys, it really demonstrates that Donald Trump is freaking out right now. And as Cohen notes there, the mafia-style threats aren't going anywhere. They're only going to get worse. But here's what just broke. There's a real connection between Trump, the president, and this hush money crime that didn't necessarily exist until tonight, based on a new revelation from Cohen's perspective. Because it demonstrates that Cohen and Trump were meeting about this stuff when Trump was in the White House. I want to read this to you because it really highlights this. A journalist saying, they were shocked by this, saying, who boy, Donald Trump and Michael Cohen, quote, met in the Oval Office at the White House to confirm the false and fraudulent repayment scheme in the Oval Office, it says. The defendant and lawyer A, lawyer A is Cohen and the defendant is Trump, would be paid the $420,000 in roughly 12 payments for $35,000 over the course of 2017. Each month, they were to send an invoice to the defendant through the Trump organization employees falsely requesting a payment of $35,000 for legal services rendered in a given month of 2017 pursuant to a retainer agreement. At no point did Lower A have a retainer agreement with the defendant or the Trump organization. In early February 2017, the defendant and lawyer A met in the Oval Office at the White House and confirmed this ag agreement. And this is big for a few reasons. One, it can really bring in the campaign finance laws. When, Co when Bragg is talking about how this violates campaign finance laws and, you know, how does it play into this, you know, Trump in his capacity as president and all of this really, really brings it in. But it's also a big deal morally and politically. Because I think a lot of people have this sense, and a lot of Trumpers are trying to push this sense, that even if he did something morally wrong, one, it wasn't illegal, it, it was, that's my perspective, and two, it's like, it's already done. Like, it happened, and then Trump became president, and then he served a full term, and he's been out of office, and it's already done. But what this demonstrates is that the scheme was not simply something from the 2016 election, but something that carried through when Trump was president. The scheme actually played out during his time, his tenure, as the most powerful person on the planet. And that's a big deal. It widens the scope of investigation. It could also mean that there could be additional investigations from Garland and the DOJ about this because they might have some new questions about illegal payments and stuff happening when Trump was in the White House and they would have clear jurisdiction given that it happened on federal land and all of that. But this is a big deal. And this is just the start. When Cohen says, I can't say everything, there's still lots he can't say. But now what he can do is reference the fact that all of his info is being published through these indictments and whatnot. It's a big deal and we're only getting started.